I think one of the best features of Photoshop is also one of the least talked about, and that's its level of customization. I'm Abby Esparza with Photomanipulation.com and today I'm going to show you what I believe to be the optimal setup for photo compositing, photo manipulation, and creative compositing. As an artist, I want everything to be at my fingertips. I don't want to be flipping through tabs and opening and closing this, that, or the other. For me, it's like if I was a traditional painter, I wouldn't be putting my tools in drawers. You want the level of friction between you and the interface to be as close to zero as possible. I'm going to walk you through my workspace, which is optimized for heavy, complex photo compositing. Uh, first, real quick though, sound off in the comments if you would be interested in any uh, Affinity Photo content. I have a bit of a renewed interest in it, so I would absolutely be down to play with it a bit more. Uh, let me know. Anyway, let's start with what I'm going to call the extras, things that do play a role but aren't uh, necessary. It's really just my screens. I have two 4K screens. One being a 24-inch Cintiq Pro and the other being a 34-inch Ultra Widescreen. That gives me a whole lot of screen real estate. Photoshop goes on my Cintiq, while my Ultra Wide holds everything else. A references, smart objects that I'm constantly poking at, my brushes panel so it can be open all the time, sometimes, uh, stock image folders, a whole lot of stuff. When I record, I go from a 4K resolution down to 1080p uh, for recording, which is what you guys end up seeing. That definitely compromises my real estate, but I use this setup for 10 plus years now and your girl definitely wasn't sitting with two 4K screens even just as of a couple of years ago. I stand by the setup for all screen sizes and resolutions. Let's get back to focusing in the program itself. We have a naked Photoshop here, how scandalous. I'm going to pop the panels back in starting left and working towards the right. Starting with ye old layers panel. Uh, so I'm dumb. Several people throughout my time on YouTube have asked if I was left handed and I never understood why until I did. I'm not left handed. And even if I was, that's not why I suggest placing your layers on the left. You should do it for the sheer amount of real estate it offers. The higher the panel, the less you have to scroll. That's it. But that becomes a real big deal when you do specifically creative compositing. This lady right here, over 850 layers, probably closer to 100. Now I admit, I keep every layer, I never merge anything, and if I want to make a new layer, I do without a second thought. If I do want to slim things down, I opt to make them into smart objects instead. But even my smaller PSDs are going to hit 100 layers most of the time. I have my layers to the left with the thumbnails set to small and clipped so the thumbs don't show the whole canvas, just the pixels on that specific layer. So even though the thumbnail is small, leading to even more or less scrolling, I can still usually pretty easily see what's on that layer, maximizing both space and utility. The only other tab here is the channels tab, which I use for extracting. Next, of course, the tools toolbar. I do keep them doubled up. I can just find the tools easier that way. This is just a super personal preference, uh, but you can customize the tools that are held here by going to edit toolbar. I don't only because I teach and I don't want to muddy the waters even more by having some wackadoodle toolbar that people can't follow along with easily. Uh, but trust me, if I could, I would. Like the frame tool, we don't know her and we don't want to know her. Moving to the right, this is where I like to place all of my most used uh, tool panels, starting with my first love adjustment layers. Adjustment layers are a must for photo compositors and editors. They are a must for non-destructive editing. They are a must for color grading. They are just a must. Next, directly attached, we have the properties panel. This is where you control your adjustment settings, so it just makes sense to have them paired. Uh, this is also where you control your layer mask settings. My most used settings being the feather to knock off some of that icky, overly harsh edge the pen tool leaves. And then select and mask, which is going to be your favorite hair selection tool if it isn't already. Next, we have the brush settings panel. 
Now, when connecting this to my stack, I drag and attach it directly below the properties panel, which will make it so they are connected but not stacked. This is shown by a line. So if I click on adjustments, you'll see the properties tab and vice versa, but not the brushes tab. This just offers a nice separation and extra organization. I'm going to stack the brushes panel in with the brush settings because it just makes sense. Now sometimes I do disconnect and place my brush settings and brush panel onto my secondary screen, uh, so I can super quickly change and adjust brushes with minimal clicks, like a traditional artist would grab a brush out of a cup, I guess. <laughs> Next up we have character and paragraph. I do very little type, but when I do, it's annoying to not have them around. Then we have actions. I also use very few and boring actions. I have one action to prep for frequency separation, one for doing my specific sharpening and resizing preparation for web release, and then some tutorial shenanigans. Uh, could not be more utilitarian and boring. Next, we have a couple of plugins, both of which are free and just found in the Adobe plugin browsing section. Composition Grid creates a set of separate uh, compositional grids that you can customize and place in your layer stack. Super handy and easier than dropping in an overlay or anything like that. And then Ratio Guides auto creates guides for certain ratios. This is great for things like uh, creating book covers or CD covers where you need a certain size ratio, uh, but you want to edit the whole image. And that will finish this floating stack. We're going to start a second with another add-on called Colorist. Colorist is a super popular color wheel app. It's not free, but it's only like 15 bucks and I do recommend it. Plus it has a 15 day free trial, so no harm in trying it out. Now I keep it floating because if a panel is connected to a panel stack, only one of those panels can be opened at a time. And I want my colors to be available to me at all times. Now I do have the Adobe Color Theme panel stacked here, just because it can be a handy color tool, but it's not something I use all the time. So it's not something that needs to be open all the time. And last but not least, my newest tweak to my workspace, my swatches panel. Placed way down in the bottom right hand corner, out of the way, but open at all times. I only have a couple of preset swatches, one for painting gold and one for painting blood, but they are used fairly often. I also like to create temporary swatches for tutorials or sometimes just for future reference. If your screen resolution is smaller, I'd probably just connect and collapse these swatches in with Colorless and Adobe Color Themes. If you want to save even more screen real estate, which apparently is the word of the day today, uh, you can shrink the panels down to just the icons. I used to have them to where their names didn't show uh, to save space, but again, to make tutorials much easier to follow, I just keep them extended. Of course, I also have some custom shortcuts and my brushes are going to have to be a whole video unto themselves, but for the most part, this is my digital workspace. If you want to see an older version of this setup at work and maybe grab a few photo editing tips along the way, you can check out my five more reasons why your photo composites suck video. <laughs> I'm Abby Esparza with photomanipulation.com. See you next time.